Hi there, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 387. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, and today is Wednesday, April 6th. So, welcome to April. Welcome to my channel, to my podcast, to my bedroom. That sounded creepier than I thought it would. I got my hair cut. Check it out. It's shorter. It's shorter, and it now has some layers in it. I just still don't know how to style it. And my, my stylist, Kathy, who I've gone to for decades, minus about a year and a half after I moved up here because I felt like I should, probably should find somebody up here. Huge mistake. I went crawling back to her. Anyway, Kathy's excellent with my hair, and she had it styled so cute. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure what to do with it yet. So, But she assures me it is long enough that I can still pull it up if I want to, and then I'll have cute little things hanging down here. So, yay. I haven't tried straightening it yet since I got it cut. So, we'll see how that looks. I don't know. But this is what it looks like today. And we're just going to go with it. And I'm going to stop talking about my hair now. Okay, well, let me get my notes so we can get back on track here because it's too early to be getting off track. Thank you so much for all your kind words about um, the loss of our puppy. <laughs> dog. Puppy dog. She wasn't a puppy. She was quite old. But anyway, thank you so much. That was really sweet of you, and I appreciate it. And thank you also so much to anyone who shopped with me in March and who specifically purchased the For Ukraine items because the March um, Ukraine fundraising that I was doing has now come to an end, and I was able to send a total of Oh, just over $900 um, split between the two organizations that I had said I was raising money for, which was World Central Kitchen and Direct Relief. Um, I sent those payments the other day, um, and I just, I appreciate your willingness to um, assist with making those donations possible. You know, watching the news, as I'm sure you guys do too, and just hearing the atrocious things that are going on over there, um, and just realizing how many thousands and thousands of people's lives have just been completely gutted and turned upside down through this war. Um, it, it makes me feel like, oh gosh, $900 isn't really going to help that much, but I have to not think that way. And I hope you won't think that way either because that relatively small amount of money in the grand scheme of things when it's added to the small amounts of money from all the other people who are donating, um, it adds up and it's magnified that way. And that's what I think we have to remember, that all our small efforts and our everyday efforts at helping people who have been affected, not only in Ukraine, but anywhere, anytime you help people, even if you can only help a little bit, just know that that is magnified by the efforts of other people as well. And that is what it takes. It takes all of us to help those who need the help. Um, and I have to keep that in mind, right? The ocean is made up with tiny little droplets. All those droplets together make a giant powerful ocean. So thank you for being some of the droplets that are becoming that powerful ocean to help World Central Kitchen and Direct Relief um, help people who have been displaced by the war in Ukraine. Um, what else do I want to tell you? I am leaving for vacation next week. Finally, oh my gosh, um, there will not be a shop update. I thought I was going to try to squeeze one more shop update in at the beginning of April, but it just wasn't going to happen, and I was stressing myself out, and I thought, this is not necessary. I'm actively dying for things that are going to be going in the shop when I get back from vacation, so that's where I'm putting my efforts right now. Um, but I do have some other things that I was able to put in the shop that were not really an official update. I will talk about those later on in the shop news segment of the podcast. Um, I will say, however, the holiday countdown sets are in the shop. They're up for pre-order. They went up April 1st, and they're going to be up through May 31st. Um, several orders have come in for them already, so if you would like to check that out, please feel free to go over to the Fiber Nymph Dye Works shop. It's the very first listing in the shop, I think. <laughs> Should be. Um, and you can check that out. There are 32 different options for those... Um, sets, including the Day 25 items. I did put up a short video, it was under 10 minutes, um, just introducing the the holiday countdown sets and the theme. The theme, the title I landed on is The Art of Contrast, 
not in contrast, which is what I think I told you last time. So I talked all about that and I shared inspiration pictures and everything like that in that other video. So I will direct you to that if you would like to know more details about the sets or just go to the shop page and read the listing. The listing has all that information in it as well. Um, so there you go. Lastly, what I'm wearing, I am wearing my Weekender by um, Andrea Mallory. So you've seen this before. You're not going to be able to see the whole thing because it's quite long. I'll maybe try to put a whole picture here, a picture of the whole thing here. <laughs> um, I am wearing it inside out, actually. Um, I like the stockinette side, as you can see, here it is. It's actually written so that the reverse stockinette is supposed to be the public side, so to speak, because then you can see the slip stitch motif or detail that runs down the whole front and back. You can't really see it when I wear it stockinette side out because it's just a, a line of pearl bumps that are kind of hidden in there in the fabric. Um, but I like the way it fits better, the wrong side out, so to speak. And I did weave my ends in well enough that you really can't see them. And I realized when I wear it the other way, um, which sometimes I still do, it's this seam, this seam up here at the shoulders, which you cannot really see much when it's worn this way, um, but you can see it in here. It kind of stands out. I mean, that was part of the, yeah, you can't really see it. I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to see it in the picture, but um, it boinks out like right down here at the base of the drop shoulder. And I don't like that. I think if I maybe took some yarn, because I have leftover yarn, if I took some yarn and kind of found a way to tuck that little very end of the shoulder seam in more so that it didn't stick out as much, I might like it better the other way. But what's actually pretty funny is this is a completely reversible sweater for me. This was a, um, a combo spin that I did. So this is my hand spun. I can wear it this way, which is wrong side out essentially, but I can wear it this way or I can wear it turn the other way back to front because there is no back or front in this pattern. Um, so I could wear it this way or I can take it off inside out and then just put it right back on the way it was meant to be worn. And same thing, either side can be the front or the back. So it's really pretty convenient that way. And I'll tell you what, I have been living in this sweater for the past probably week and a half because our weather turned again. It hasn't been super warm. and I've been really chilly. And so I've been wearing this sweater so much. Matter of fact, I think I slept in it one night. I was cold. <laughs> so anyway, that's my weekender. I'm it's funny, I finished it over a year ago now, and I just wasn't super in love with it until now. Um, now, I just, I'm so happy with it, and I'm really enjoying wearing it, so. And I may make another one someday. <laughs> okay, let's get into the knitting. There is not a lot. I've only worked actively on two projects since I talked to you last, so we're going to start with those. And the first one is a half-finished object, which is the first crystal pie dark sock that I'm making for my daughter. This is Fiber Nymph Dye Works Bounce in the crystal pie dark colorway, which was one of my two pie day colorways for this year. And Emma liked the dark one, so I told her I would turn that sample into a pair of socks for her. So I finished the first sock. It's just a two-by-one rib, which is my kind of default US1 needles, uh, slip slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I did not bother to do any yarn management after my heel turn on this one. I usually do so that I can keep the striping pattern regular down the front of the sock, but since Pi Day colorways have such irregular striping sizes anyway, and there are places where you'll skip a color if there's a zero in the pie sequence, um, it's not impossible to skip stripes. So I wasn't worried that this was going from this blue to this green, even though there should be this light gray before you get to the green. It just didn't matter to me and you can't really tell. So um, yeah, I'm happy with this one. And the second sock is started. I would say I'm probably about this far down on the cuff. All right, so there's that. The other project that I have worked on, you have not seen at all. I started it totally on the spur of the moment and it's a sweater and I don't know that I have hang on let me see is it over here well I have the pattern over here but I did not print out 
I don't think I, oh yeah, I did. Never mind. I thought I didn't print out pages with pictures. It's the Simple Stripes Pullover by Suvi Simola. So that's what that looks like. And I forgot that I had even purchased that pattern, let alone had it printed out. Then I found it on my desk one day and I remembered, oh yeah, that was the sweater I was going to try to make using my Indie Dyer Swap Advent Minis from last year. And I started it, but I was trying to modify it with a weird little stitch detail. It wasn't working and I ripped it out and I totally forgot about it until I was sitting here in the bedroom one day and I looked over and I have this bag here that's full of um, ridge top fingering weight leftovers but there's some pretty large leftovers in here and I keep looking at it and I thought you know I really should do something with this yarn and I thought you know what I wanted to make the stripes pull over by Andrea Mowry. It's been on my radar for a while. I thought, oh, I should do that. But between having that thought about this yarn and then actually casting it on, I found the printout of that pattern, the Simple Stripes pullover that I already owned. And I thought, well, I will just use the one that I already own. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I cast on, and I think I cast it on maybe last week. I don't remember which date now. Um, and I'm going to try to do this so that I don't lose stitches and it's kind of a hot mess at the moment, but we'll see what we can do. Okay. So, oh gosh. Okay. So here's the front. It is a top down raglan and you start in the back and you do these short rows to make the back of the neck a little higher. And then, cause you can see right here where it joins the front of the neck band, you don't have any extra orange there. So, and then you start working in the round and you start doing all the raglan increases, um, which went fine. The top part of the sweater went super fast and I'm using, the pattern calls for using five different colors. I had chosen six colors to use, but then I also have smaller leftovers of some even more colors. So I'm just throwing extra colors in here and there. I'm not doing an absolute, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever, repeat every single time with the color. So like here, I've got lime green. On this repeat, I'm using this darker green. Um, same way here, this was, I think, like my graphite color, and then this is wisp. So I'm, I'm changing it up a little bit. I don't think I have enough of any one color to have done all of the repeats that the pattern calls for, so I'm making do with what I have because I want to use all these leftovers. In fact, I've got more small bits and leftovers in another basket in my other room um, that I can use to finish this. So, At any rate, I am done with the yoke and I split for the sleeves and then I knit these from the brown down to the gold, the green, and the wisp. And then I decided I was going to start working the sleeves concurrently with the body because, again, I'm not sure how much yarn I have and I don't want to run out of the colors that I need for the sleeves by doing all of the body with them. So I picked up this first sleeve, which at this point was already on um, a holder. I use the cables from my... Licka interchangeable set, my small set, the three inches, the three inch or three and a half inch, I don't know, the smaller set. Um, I use that as my yarn holders for sleeves in these kind of sweaters. So they're just, it's the little cable with the little ends on it. Um, so I just put needles on the ends and I worked away and did that first sleeve so that it's caught up with the colors that I have in the sweater already. And so I'm doing the same thing now over on the other sleeve. I did the brown, now I'm on the gold, and then I will catch up to where I was, and then I can do another stripe on the body, and I will go back and forth. Body, sleeve, sleeve, body, sleeve, sleeve. Um, I'm planning to do a few modifications. No kidding, right? Because um, <laughs> you know me. I like... Here, I have to show you the pattern. I like the sweater. I like what it looks like. What I don't like is I don't like these folded hems and that's what they do on the bottom of the sweater as well as on the sleeves. I'm going to do ribbing. I'm also, <coughs> excuse me, 
I'm going to do a split hem on the sides of the sweater. I really like that. That's what I have here on my Weekender. I can't remember if the Weekender was written for that or not, or if I just did that. I feel like maybe it was written that way, but at any rate, that's what I'm going to do on this. And I'm going to make it a little longer than it calls for in the pattern because I would like it to come down to like my mid butt. I like that length in a sweater. I'm going to do a split hem with wide ribbing probably. Again, like I did on this, there's so many things I like about this Weekender. I don't know why I haven't worn it, but when I did the Weekender, I did a four by one rib on the bottom, which you really can't see in these dark colors, but I like that as a nice flat ribbing for this kind of a split hem deal. So I'm probably gonna try that, and then I'll just do regular ribbing on the sleeves. I don't think I'm gonna make the sleeves quite that long. I will probably do them maybe about bracelet length or to my wrist at the very longest. Okay, so those are the things I'm going to modify in the sweater. I was having this pipe dream that I could get this finished before our trip and take it with me. I don't think that's going to happen. It's a fingering weight sweater. And to the best of my recollection, I don't think I've ever finished a fingering weight sweater. I've tried them and I never end up finishing them. So I don't know. I may have done one a long, long, long time ago, like when I first started knitting before I knew how much work it would be. I don't remember. But yeah, I will be shocked if I actually get this done in time to take it on us on our trip with us. It may not be the most practical piece of clothing to take with me either. I'm trying to pack things that I can, you know, mix and match with a lot of outfits because I'm trying to pack light for this trip. Or I guess mix and match to make a lot of outfits out of just a core um, wardrobe of travel clothes. So we'll see but I am enjoying it and I love that I'm getting to use this ridge top finger I love my ridge top and I know I haven't had it in the shop really at all lately because I don't have a lot of it left I am still I need to get in touch with the mill I tried once and I never heard back from them so I don't know if that means that they can't accommodate my order anymore or if I need to find somewhere else but I really would like to get more of this yarn I love this yarn it's a 80-20 Romney Falkland blend, non-superwash, have it fingering weight, have it in DK, and I just adore it so much. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad to be able to be using those leftovers. So those are the only two projects that I have actively worked on since I talked to you last. Um, that does bring us to things that are upcoming. And I do have another garment that I would actually love to knit and have ready to take on this trip. But at this point, we're leaving a week from today. Like, we'll be at the airport right now next week. Um, so it's probably not going to happen. But this is the yarn that I wanted to use. It's more hand spun. This is some BFL from Briar Rose Fibers. I spun this up a few years back. I can't remember exactly when. But I've got... A little over 1100 yards of this really beautiful blue and what I would like to make is a slipover now if you watch the lefty knitter podcast Aquila just finished a slipover it's called the Highland slipover I will put a picture of the pattern like the pattern picture here um, it's gray Aquila's is also gray I love Aquila's version. I know they're both gray, but for whatever reason, just the way hers fits her, it looks so nice. If you're on Ravelry or Instagram, she's on Instagram, she has posted pictures of hers, so check her out. Um, anyway, God, I'm all over the place here. I love that. I am not a vest person. I don't really care for vests much. I have a few fleecy vests that I sometimes wear in the winter, but they're not my go-to. But I really like this slipover idea. And apparently it's a thing. I don't know, is it like Scottish maybe? I don't know if it's Irish, whatever. It's from something over in that part of the world and it looks like it's a thing that you just, it's a nice over layer that helps keep you warm without being too hot. And so I thought, oh my gosh, I could make one of those and that would be great to wear as like an interchangeable item while we're away, right? Yeah, except I have to actually knit it, not just think about it. Because it's not going to materialize. I do not have elves that come into my house and take my yarn and knit me things. It would be awesome if I did sometimes, but I don't. 
anyway, I love the gray version that both, like, that's the thing. From the pattern picture, I don't know that I would have ever really been drawn to that, that style, let alone that pattern. But after seeing Aquila's, I love it and I must have it. Um, and I thought about gray because I've got a sweater's quantity of gray. I cannot remember the brand. It's a commercial brand. Um, so I thought, well, I could do a gray one because that would go with a lot of things that I could put underneath it. But then I thought, you know what, I'm trying to get away from wearing a lot of gray at this point because gray hair and then a whole gray thing here, um, it's a lot of gray. It was funny. Bill and I were just talking about this the other day. Bill's my husband, in case you're new. Um, and I have a sweater, just like a commercial cardigan. It doesn't button. It's just like a lightweight thing. But I wear it a lot, just sort of like around the house. It's convenient for me to throw on. And so I wear it a ton. And so I was wearing this weekender a lot lately. And I made that comment to him the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been wearing this almost every single day. I really like it. Um, you know, I knitted a year ago and now I'm finally enjoying it. And he's like, yeah, well, it's definitely a lot more colorful than that gray thing you wear. <laughs> he's like, it's just so, so gray. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, gray is gray. Um, he's like, there's a word. I'm looking for a word. And I like, was like bland. He's like, yeah, that's it. And I had to laugh because he's absolutely right. I, it's bland because gray hair, gray sweater. And then I have this pair of like heathered gray pajama pants that I also wear a lot. And true to the stereotype of someone who works from home, I'm often in my pajamas at least to lunchtime. So like gray, gray, gray. I could blend into like static on a television. So all that to say is I'm trying to get away from gray. That's why I pulled this yarn out because I think this would be really pretty. Um, I actually have enough leftover yarn from my weekender that I could probably make a slip over out of that. Um, and then I would have a slip over and a sweater out of the same yarn. I'm not sure I want to do that. Anyway, again, I have 1,100 yards for this. I used just under 1,000 yards for this entire weekender. So I'm sure this would be enough to make that slip over. But the other thing about the slipover is even though that Highland slipover pattern is what Aquila used and what I like how it looks, it has, a, I don't know if you noticed here, I'll put the picture in again, it's got that, that collar up here that I don't know that I want. I don't want that, but I do like this, this boat neck deal that's going on with the Weekender. And you know, that slipover is a drop shoulder pattern. This is a drop shoulder. So I thought I already own this pattern. I am going to just make it just like this again with the split hem and I'll just do the same thing. I don't know if I'll bother with that slip stitch detail. I may, I may not since I can just wear it interchangeably. Um, I may not though, because that way maybe I can just have the, um, the stock in that side be the right side and not worry about a wrong side because I'm not going to do sleeves. Cause that's the other thing about the weekend or like whatever you've got here, you have the opposite here because that's how the pattern was written to have stockinette sleeves with reverse stockinette body. I'm wearing it the opposite way. Um, but for the slip over, I don't have sleeves at all, so I don't have to worry about it. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to just use the weekender pattern as my guide and do the body of it. And then I'll just do like, you know, sleeve bands or sleeve cuffs, armhole bands, whatever you would call it. And then I'll, this would just be like this, this fun, you know, ribbing that's up here that you seam together. And it would be a slipover. And I think that would be so much fun. So that is one thing that is definitely on my up and coming list. Then the other thing is vacation knitting. Like I don't know what I'm taking with me to work on, on the trip. I'm going to have the flight from Pittsburgh to Boston. Okay, that's one flight. I know I can knit on that flight. As I understand it from what I looked at from Aer Lingus's website, which is what we're taking from Boston to Shannon and then back, I don't think I can have knitting needles in the cabin of the airplane. I can have them in my checked luggage, but it does not look like, like I could take knitting needles. I could take crochet, I think. They do not have crochet hooks listed on their prohibited items list. And if I would get a, an agent 
or a flight attendant who did not know the difference between knitting needles and crochet hooks, I could be tempted to stab somebody. <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. If they're Irish, they certainly know the difference. I don't think there's anyone in Ireland who does not know the difference between knitting and crochet. Um, so I could take crochet to work on, on the flight. On the flight over, it's not going to be a big deal because it's mostly going to be overnight and I'm going to be sleeping. Um, fingers crossed. The way home, though, is going to be during the day and I will be bored stiff if I can't do something with my hands. I wonder if, like, needle work, like, um, what's the word? Not needlework. Embroidery. I wonder if those kind of needles are prohibited. I don't know. If anybody has flown Aer Lingus to, to and from Ireland lately, and you know what the status is of that, like from actually being on the flight, and I know it always actually comes down to who your flight attendants are, because they really, really have the final say, even here in the United States where you are technically allowed to take that stuff. If a flight attendant tells you, hey, can you please put that away, and you argue with them, I think that's when they like duct tape you to the seat and toss you out. <laughs> seat and all. I don't know. Anyway, I need to take something. Bill's like, just take a book. I'm like, I can listen to an audiobook while I'm crafting. I want, to, I want to be able to do something. So I don't know what I'm taking that I can work on on the plane. Um, however, oh my gosh, now my nose is itchy because I keep sniffing my yarn. Um, I'm definitely, as far as they, while I'm there, unlike our... Um, motorcycle trips that we go on and I'm always hopeful that I'm going to have time to knit um, and then end up I don't. This I should actually have time to knit because we're doing a lot the travel is all going to be by coach um, so I will have time on the coach I mean I don't want to be staring at a pattern but I can do like a sock or something and look out the window and see what's going on and then there will be things going on, like musical things in the evening. I just want something for my hands. You guys are knitters. You probably understand this, right? You, you need something in your hands. So I will definitely be taking a sock project. That is definite. Um, and I think I will take yarn with me for some sort of a, like, a mindless sort of shawl or wrap. Like I was thinking like taking a skein of fingering weight that I could do something like a, oh, what was that pattern called? I made a bunch of them. Not the boomerang, but like that, like where you start at the tip and then you work your way out until you use up all your yarn, that kind of a thing. What the heck is the name of the, the one I'm trying to think of? I'll put it down here. You all know what it is. It was like everybody and their uncle knit a bunch of them. Um, it was a Martina Bem pattern. Hitchhiker, the hitchhiker. That's what it was. So maybe I'll just do something like that and just take a really fun yarn because heaven knows I've got tons of yarn in my stash that I would like to use. Oh, that's the other thing I need to tell you about. I didn't bring it over. I'll grab it though. Sorry thought came and whoo squirrel over here talk about this so anyway that's my travel knitting plans definitely a sock project because those are a given and just one other thing that I can work on and that'll be more than enough okay this is end of the podcast Lisa coming back to record this little bit and pop it in <laughs> earlier in the podcast because I forgot to I forgot to record this sorry I've got yarn fur on me Okay, I forgot to tell you about my April personal yarn challenge yarn because I did pick that. Um, if you are new, um, I'm doing um, the Year of the Stash. I'm taking part in that with Carol from the A Stitch in Time podcast. She's doing a year-long make-along called the Year of the Stash. And as part of that project or as part of that along, she's doing a personal sock yarn club for herself each month of the year with sock yarn to make socks. Duh. Um, but I didn't want to do that because I'm always making socks anyway, so I don't need a reason to make socks. So instead, I just I'm doing it with any yarn that was in my stash and I had pulled like 12 different yarns or yarn groupings out at the beginning of the year, had my husband put them all in project bags for me, and then I'm just randomly picking one each month. Um, I finished my one from 
last month super early and then just started a couple of other stash projects rather than pulling another one from my designated 12 bags but I did pull a bag out for April and I was really really hopeful that whatever I picked would be an appropriate project that I could take yarn that I could take and do a project on my trip unfortunately I don't think I'm gonna be able to this is the yarn that I picked out and it is some more hand spun um, ultimately this I would say I'm gonna say this is probably on average a worsted it is another loop bullseye bump that I spun some time ago um, it is rather it feels a little ropey to me like I really I, I think there's just a lot of ply in it I mean it's not twisty or anything but it just it feels a little ropier than the other one that I just used for my project last month um, I'm not sure what I will make out of this. I think this would probably be really nice to do another one of those cowls like I did that sable cow last month, but I don't think I want to do another sable cow right now. Um, it might end up being another cowl. I don't know. Um, but I'm not feeling it right now for this. If I wasn't going on vacation this month, I would definitely find a project and I would work on this right now. Um, I could have just put this back and pulled a different one, but I didn't want to do that because I feel like that's sort of cheating, even though it's totally my own made up rules that I'm following. Um, but at the same time, if I don't use this this month, I'm not going to beat myself up over it because I do have other stash projects on the go. I started um, that vamping shawl, which is what I started right after I finished last month's um, stash project challenge project so that's all stash yarn I haven't worked on that lately because I started the sweater um, but that's a stash project the sweater the striped sweater is a stash project and those are both like pretty large quantities of stash yarn so I'm not feeling bad about this not getting used right now since I am working with stash yarn I did not look through my records to see how much yardage I have here I mean I could just figure it out but I haven't done that either um, I'm pretty certain there's not gonna be more than 200 here if even that so it's not gonna be able to be a giant project um, and again it's just a little dense it's a dense hand spun um, it was a chain ply not my best chain plying <laughs> but it's pretty I really like the colors those blues and the browns in there um, at least I think this is a loose it looks like it would be a loop bullseye bump it has to be it wouldn't be any of my fibers because it's also got um, Angelina in it you can see the sparkle there so this would have to have been a loop, loop bullseye bump anyway we'll see it will become something but I just wanted to let you know that I did actually pick one for April and I just didn't do anything I may just hold off and use this one for May and then once I finish whatever this is then I'll pick another bag and that would get me caught up again um, so that's a possibility oh and speaking of loop bullseye bumps I'm still spinning that current one that I have on the wheel I was determined I was gonna get it off the wheel before I leave on this trip and I sat the other day and I spun on it for what seemed like forever it's still not done it's just the fiber that will not end and not in a great way um, although I am finally to that outer area where I'm starting to really get into that goldish yellow color so that's a blessing but it's still undone and I do not think I'm going to ply it I think I've decided that I'm just going to leave it as a singles and when I end up knitting with it I think I'm going to dye myself some mohair kid silk mohair and hold it together with that I think that'll make me happier since so much of it is just flesh colored <laughs> neutral weirdness I think that'll be a better idea so anyway just wanted to pop that in there because I forgot about it it wasn't in my show notes and then I started talking about things and it's like oh yeah I forgot about that so anyway there we go back to our regularly scheduled session of me talking and talking and talking because this one's gonna be long folks sorry
Let's move on to the Meomao, which we are in the first quarter of. March and April is the first quarter of the Meomao. Um, that's the Make It Your Own Mao. If you have not joined in but you would like to, you are more than welcome to join in at any time. It's never, ever too late. All of the um, rules, guidelines, what have you, guidelines, um, are listed both in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Ravelry group as well as in the blog on the Fiber Nymph Dye Works website. It's a pinned post at the very top of the blog. Um, matter of fact, I have a link directly to that from the top bar that's on the whole website. You can just click on Mio Mal and it'll take you right there. And it tells you how you can take part. Um, if you are not able to post on Ravelry, you're welcome to share what you're working on for the Mio Mal in Instagram. There's a hashtag you can use, which I will put down here. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head and I don't want to say it incorrectly but it's probably 90k Mio Mal is what I'm gonna say it probably is but I will definitely put it down here um, yeah the chat I will say though if you can do Ravelry the community for this um, mid long or make long is thriving and that is just warming the cockles of my heart so thank you to all of you who are participating I am trying to stay caught up though. I read through and it, like if the posts are a week or more old, I feel bad replying to them at that point. Um, but I do try to reply. But please know I am reading them all and I'm definitely enjoying seeing your projects. And the finished object submission forms are just coming in. There's some coming in almost every single day at this point. I love seeing what you guys have worked on and how they're, you know, what your theme was and how that's tying in. It just makes me so happy I'm just so happy that you guys are enjoying this and again if you want to join in and you haven't already you can you can send in a submit or a theme form for the current period um, and start taking part immediately your projects just have to be started on or after the date that you submit your theme form even though the quarter is two months long like if you submit a theme form today you can't submit a project that you started back at the beginning of March. It needs to have started today or later. Um, but then after that, if you continue, as long as you have your theme for the second quarter in by May 1st, you have that whole two months to work on your projects. The other thing I was going to let you know, and I had it in my show notes last time and I don't remember if I actually got to tell you or remember to tell you, was about whips um, because Generally speaking, in most of my knit-alongs or make-alongs, unless it's actually a whip-along, um, whips aren't usually included. Its projects have to be started and finished within each period of the along. The only exception to that for the Mio Mao would be if your theme for the quarter is whips. So if your theme for the quarter is whips, obviously your projects can have been whips, but they need to have been a whip prior to the start of the quarter. That would be the only, only caveat there on whips. I had a question about whips from someone and I said, no, you can't use whips. But then I realized after the fact, well, what if her theme was whips? But I don't think it was in this case, but I just thought I would point that out. Okay, so that is the Mia Mao. Um, and you know what? You can always email me. Email is best for anything because I will definitely see the message. Ravelry messages, it can take me a while to see. And on any other social media, please don't expect an answer. I mean, I might get it back to you. I try, but I can't guarantee it. Matter of fact, just this week, I found two messages that people sent me literally years ago about like test knitting something that I was designing at the time and I never saw them because they were in some weird little hidden message place because I wasn't friends with those people so they don't show up in my actual messages on Instagram yeah and I feel bad because then I think people are just thinking I'm totally ignoring them and I'm you know a not nice person <laughs> um that rhymes with itch, but I'm not, I just didn't see the messages. So, okay, that's it for the 90% part for the, um, crafting. Let's jump into shop news real quick. Um, again, not a ton to tell you because I'm not doing any shop updates right now. Um, but the biggest thing I would say is that the 2022 holiday countdown sets, the art 
of contrast. <laughs> um, the pre-orders for those are up in the shop. Again, I did a short under 10 minute video introducing everything about the countdown sets this year. Um, you can watch that on YouTube. You have through, through now through May 31st to place an order. Um, and if you have any questions at all, please just email me. I'm using a new email address. I mean, the fibernymph at gmail.com address will definitely get something to me. But if you use hello at fibernymphdieworks.com, that will also get to me. And that's an easier one to remember, I think, for some people. Either one, um, email me any questions you have, and I'll be happy to help you out. So anyway, we've got those in the shop. Thank you so much for um, shopping my anniversary shop update, which was happening the last time I recorded the um, Confetti Tweed Merino DK. Oh my gosh, that was a huge hit. Um, there's still a little bit left in the shop, but I'm definitely going to be ordering more in because so many people just scooped that up. So yay. Thank you so much for that. Um, I did, as I said earlier, I decided against trying to squeeze in one last update before my vacation. I did add, I went through the shop as I do occasionally and I cleaned some things up, did some housekeeping. There are some things that I put on sale in the shop that are marked down just because they've been in there for a while, you know, like old, out of season things. Um, so they're marked down a little bit. And then I did do some sets. Um, number one, there's a small number of self-striping grab bags. Um, these ones are only two skeins. Um, there's one that's sport weight and then the rest are all fingering weight. But I think there's only like five or six of them all together. I can't remember. So go ahead and check those out. They're all, it's at a discount. Um, all my grab bags are always discounted some percentage. So you can check that listing out. I have not advertised this anywhere yet, and I think I'm going to hold off on advertising it until after I get the podcast uploaded. Um, so that this way you guys know about it first, because I feel like a lot of times I do things and then I advertise them everywhere else. And by the time I get the podcast up, a lot of stuff is gone. So for those of you who watch the podcast, this is my way of saying thank you. You're getting the word first. I will not advertise it or put it in a newsletter until after the podcast has been out for a little while. Um, okay, so uh, self-striping grab bags, two skin grab bags. There are also sets. I put um, my winter palette variegated colorway. I had dyed not only the self-striping, but I did the variegated and I did it on sunshine and floof. And there was still several skeins of that left. And so since this colorway is going to be starting to go out of season here, um, I put these together in sets of two. So you'll get a skein of sunshine and a skein of floof in this colorway. Um, and you could use it for whatever project you might want to. Um, again, these are also marked down in set form like that. And as a bonus, I'm going to include a copy, a download code for a copy of um, my Ryoko wrap, which is a pattern that uses one skein of sunshine and one skein of floof. So whether or not you actually want to use this yarn for that or not, you'll at least have the pattern. And the last thing is um, I've got some more mini skein grab bag-ish sets. They're not really grab bags because I'm going to be taking photos of, or I have taken photos of what they consist of. Um, so you'll be able to see what you're getting. So I've got three different configurations of minis. I put together some packages of neutrals. So there is um, plain vanilla, wisp, sand, and soft black. Um, this set is all bedazzled. Um, there are there are different configurations, and they'll be in the listing, so you'll see them whether they're all bedazzled or a mix and match of something. You'll be able to tell in the listing. So there's these neutral packs of four, and then I've got this pack, which I don't know what to call this because it's all like pinks and rosy colors and purple, those kind of shades. Um, but it's these five colors, and again, this pack is all bedazzled, but there's other configurations too. So this is another option. And then I put together these packs of six bright colors. <laughs> and this is obviously a mix and match. I think this one is Mountain Tweed and Bedazzled. Oh, there's all three, Mountain Tweed, Bedazzled, and Bounce in this one. Um, so there's some of these, and again, in different configurations. So those are all 
by the time this video goes up, those will be in the shop. And again, all of this, these sets and things that I'm talking about, they're in there at a discount. Um, so hopefully that'll be a nice deal for you if you're interested in any of those. The shop will be open while I'm away. I'm not going to close it. You will be able to place orders. Just know that your orders obviously are not going to ship until after I get back, which I get back on the 23rd. So that coming week after I'm back, will, things will ship out. Yeah, and other than that, I am still dying a little bit between now and when I leave, um, but it's all for stuff that will be going in the shop when I come home, including the 2022 um, Downseller Studio Splash Pad Party Exclusive Colorway, because I'm a pro shop sponsor for that, which that will be coming up again this summer. I think it kicks off at the end of May. Um, and then is usually runs through like June and July, but you'll have to check the Downseller Studio podcast group um, or the website for that. And I, I don't know if she has all those parameters up yet, Jen from Downseller Studio, but I will at least put a link to her website so that you can check that out if you're interested. But I do have an exclusive colorway happening with that, and I have more to tell you about it, but I will wait until after I am back um, to fill you in on that. So let's move on to things that are bringing me joy this week. Um, number one, I told you last time that I was going to be getting to see my son, my oldest son, for the first time in like four years. He was coming to visit. So that was amazing. They were only here for, um, I don't know, maybe three or four hours, he and his fiance. But it was just so good to get to see him. And I will get to see him again this, over the summer, too. So that's exciting. Speaking of my oldest son, his son, my grandson, is turning 17 tomorrow. I'm not sure how that happened, but it did. I have a 17-year-old grandson. Lastly, vacation. Vacation is finally really starting to feel real. We leave a week from today. I'm at the point where I need to actively start packing. I also was at the point last week where I realized I've been living in the same comfortable stretchy clothes for the past two plus years now and I really need some clothes that I can wear on this trip that don't look like I've been wearing them nonstop for two years. <laughs> um, some of my other clothes don't fit quite as well because thank you pandemic. Uh, but I did. I got some new pants. I actually ordered pants from Kohl's. I got three pair. Two fit perfectly, except they were too long because I'm short. So I hemmed pants this weekend. The one pair did not fit at all. Weird, same size, just didn't fit right at all. So those are going back. And then I was at Target and I got two pair of pants. Again, the one pair fits perfect. It's the right length, the right waist. Everything's perfect about it. The other pair I also had to hem. But that's what I did this weekend. I took a few hours one afternoon and I ironed and pinned and I sat and I hand hemmed my pants and they fit great now. I also ordered some tops because I can't find tops anywhere that don't look like, um, like, I don't know even what to say about them. What is with all of the ruffles and floofs and flounces? Like it's all, it's not just like little girl clothes or even like juniors clothes but like grown ass adult woman clothes I don't wear flounces and I really don't wear flounces across my boobs it's really hard to find clothes so I could not find tops anywhere in any stores that I liked but Kohl's usually I can I can usually pull something off at Kohl's and I finally did I found five tops um, which are shipping and hopefully we'll be here before we go and hopefully they will fit so and hopefully I'll be able to layer. I'm planning to take sweaters with me on my trip, um, like my Felix cardigan and um, I don't know, I might take my Icelandic. I'd have to shave it first, my hero cardigan. I just wanna be cozy, you know? My husband, he will, he'll pack very utilitarian, like, um, I think I was talking about this last time. Uh, he packs the kind of clothes like you can hike in or whatever, you know, those kind of, technical fabrics or what have you and I don't like those they're not comfortable to me I want to be comfortable so anyway I did get a new pair of shoes new pair of Merrill hiking shoes love Merrill's they're my go-to shoe and I keep ordering the same color and the same style every single year because I do go through about a pair a year <laughs> I wear them to death 
Um, got new shoes, and I ordered, I know you don't really care about this. At this point, this is therapy for me to just tell you this. Um, I ordered some of those little squeezy silicone toiletry containers like to put shampoo and stuff in they have this little built-in suction cup i think they're the cutest little things and you can just like suction cup them to the wall in the shower wherever you're at i don't know i have some that i've used for a couple of years and i love them and i've never been able to find them again so i finally found some online so yeah anyway i don't know what else to say i'm just i'm in that mode i'm starting to think okay i need to get packed i need to pull clothes out oh, i'm gonna take a shawl Hang on. This. <laughs> I think I'm going to pack this and take this along with me because this will be nice to wrap up in, you know, or have to wrap around my neck when we're someplace windy. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to take my, that hat and mittens or mitt set that I also knit out of one of my stash challenges. The stash challenge is what I forgot to tell you about my April one. And so I'm going to record that when I'm done here and then I'll pop it in earlier in the podcast. So you'll have already seen it. Um... Anyway, yeah, I'm, I want to take hand knits. I just want to, that's, that was what makes me happy. And it's sort of my comfort thing. Like, I love to travel, but the older I get, the more anxious travel makes me. And so I need um, comfort items. And so it's sort of like my comfort blanket or something. <laughs> so having my hand knits with me. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, I'm not going to get to record again before we leave, obviously. I don't know what my connectivity is going to be like while we're in Ireland. I know we will have Wi-Fi at all the hotels we're going to be at. Um, this is a tour. I don't remember if I really told you the details of it, and I don't want to go into too much of it now because this is pretty long, but this is a tour that we had signed up for. It's a music tour, um, Wild Atlantic Way Music Tours, I think is the company... That may not be exactly right, but I'll put it in the show notes. Um, and they plan all these music tours that go along the west coast of Ireland. Um, and each week's tour is hosted by a different musician. And the musician who is our host... Oh, wow, there's a huge crow that just flew up in the tree. Sorry. Um, Eileen Ivers is the host for our tour. We were originally supposed to go on this trip in April of 2020 and didn't, obviously. Got pushed last year and had to be postponed again, and so this year. Um, we will be there over Easter. Um, I'm just, I'm finally letting myself get excited about this and just feeling like I need to be confident that the world is not going to implode around me while we're there. Um, and then it'll be okay. And then I can come home and I can tell you all about it. But my was, what I was saying is I don't know how much I'll be able to post like to my Instagram account. I would like to be able to post pictures. Hopefully I'll be able to, but we'll see. Um, so check there, my personal one, that's the at fiber Nymph account is where I will be posting those if I'm able to. So, but you can be sure once I get back, I will tell you all about it because <laughs> it'll be fun. I will see you guys once I return from Ireland. I hope in the meantime you all have a lovely April. Whatever you're doing, if you celebrate Easter, I hope you have a lovely Easter. Um, and if you don't, I just hope you have a really good April. And I'll talk to you again at the end of April once I'm back from a trip. So take care. Love you guys. Bye.